All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day 33 of On Shape. We are going to fully make our trammel with every piece included. <clears throat> we're going to start from the very bottom. We're going to throw all the pieces in there with our constraints, and this is pretty good practice for students overall. The only caveat between this and the real thing would be that some of my pins are going to be, um, or sorry, my, some of my threaded bolts are actually just going to be pins. And then there's one screw in here that actually screws into um, this piece right here. And we're just, I'm just didn't make that. Um, because it's a screw that actually bites into the material, we're just gonna do this because um, this is wonderful practice so far. Um, and this is, like I said, their first project. So I'm not gonna ask uh, too much out of them in one get go. But let's go ahead and assemble this thing from the top. So I'm going to click on plus and we'll create a new assembly. And the first thing I'm going to do is it's going to ask me to, uh, what are we going to insert? So we click on insert and we have each of our part studios. We're going to click on trammel base once because we're going to use one trammel base. Okay. We have the slides. So we're going to bring the slides in. We have the slide arm. Now I have both the this uh, super simple model and the more complicated one. Both are going to work because the, the distance on the holes are the same. So if you made yours from scratch and yours is not near as in-depth as mine, that's totally fine. Uh, this will work just as well. And then we also have the corner blocks. Now notice is that the corner blocks when they came in, uh, I don't have enough of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the drop down menu and I'm going to ask for one more of each part. And that's going to be because I have the four holes on the other side to do. Okay, so we have all of our parts in the environment. What are we gonna do with them? Well, actually, I'm gonna take this one and delete it because I don't need it. If we don't need it for now, I'm just gonna drag it off to the side. And the first thing we're gonna do is take this very bottom piece and we're gonna do what's called a fix. We're gonna make sure that this piece will not move when we animate anything else. So we're gonna click on this bottom plate right here. It's gonna highlight, I'm gonna right click and hit fix. So what this does is it grounds and this piece cannot move. And that way when I start to do other things in the environment like Revolute, this piece will not spin. It's the other pieces on it that will spin. Okay, so let's go to the next thing. What are we gonna do with our first mate? So we're gonna click on fastened mate and we're gonna connect. There's a couple different ways you can do it. I found one to be super helpful is we're just gonna fasten the bottom edge of this wall to the top edge of this wall. Now notice I had very particular, had to make sure I was, my axes were oriented in the right way. So let me show you what happens if we don't orient in the right, in the right way. So if I'm just gonna click on fasten mate, I'm gonna click on you know this bottom wall down here and then I'm gonna click on this top wall right here. And uh oh, things aren't working right. And that's because the second time I clicked it, my Z axis was pointing different than my first part. So it's, it's gonna do something like this. And so you might be able to get it to work by changing a couple different axes, but usually not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click exit out of that mate and we're gonna try again. So click on fasten mate. We want this front wall. Now we see how Z is pointing kind of towards the left. We're gonna click on the bottom of this. So notice that direction is the blue line is coming out. When I go into this wall, if the blue line is pointing up, that means my axes are going different directions. And so what I want then is to point them in the same direction. That way everything is looking good. Okay, next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our corner blocks. Now, if we move things around, you notice my pins immediately came out. And that's okay, I was full on expecting that because they're not assembled with each other. So let's go ahead and add in some of our other blocks. So I'm going to, what I found to be the most helpful is I'm going to fasten this corner piece right here is going to go to this corner piece right here. Zoom in a little bit. Move on down, there we go. Oh, did I do something wrong? Sure did, flick my axes, and there we go. 
So it takes a little bit of practice to get right. Clearly I haven't mastered it, but I'm able to figure it out in the long run. So is that piece fastened the way I want it to? Yes. Can it move? Is it fully ground? And yes, it is fully ground. I can't drag it anymore. Okay, let's go ahead and do the next piece. So what I'm gonna do is click on Fasten Mate. We're gonna click on this bottom corner right here. And that bottom corner is gonna fit on this front wall right here. Notice I had both of those Z's pointing in the same direction, so this one was assembled correctly. Okay, we're looking great. I'm gonna speed up just a little bit because these parts kind of uh, start to be very similar. So that is going in that direction, and I'm gonna want it assembled going that direction as well. Hit the check mark, and we're looking good. And we have one last piece, and that's gonna be this wall right here. Is gonna be on this wall right here. There we go. Hit the check mark, and there we go. We got our four blocks in. The next thing I need to do is add in my sliders. So the sliders are gonna be a little bit of a different uh, system. We are going to use the, the this middle of the slider right here is gonna slide. Oh, I don't I'm gonna have to go to the other side because we won't let me do it. There we go. The middle of my slide, let's flip the axes. There we go. My slide is gonna go up and down through this slider right here. So instead of a fastened constraint, we're gonna do a slider constraint. And if we hit the play symbol right here, it shows me, is this sliding as expected? Now it's the right direction. It, are my max and min's correct? No, but it's the right direction and that's what I want. Okay, and so now what we're gonna do is we're going to fix that those max and min's on that constraint. So I'm gonna click exit out of here. Let's double click on slider one and let's do an offset. So the offset, let's look at what offsets do. If my part isn't right, you can move it by offsetting where it is. So we can move it in the X direction, we can move it in the Y direction, or we can move it in the slider direction, and that's gonna be on our limits. So if I type in one, it shifts my slider down an inch, so let's try and keep it right there. And the maximum it's gonna slide is going to be uh, 5.25. So if I hit play now, does it slide as expected? And yes, it does. Hit the green check mark and we are good to go. Next thing we're gonna do is the other slider and that's with this rounded edge right here. So we're gonna click on eight. Actually, we're gonna click on slider right here. We're gonna click on slider, click on, hold on this face, hover over it till we get that middle of my face pointing towards me. And then we're gonna do the same thing right here. Okay, that one looks a little bit better. Now let's look at our offset. It looks like we need to bring it out just a little bit. So, or sorry, my limits. We're just gonna put negative 0.5. And that's cause I want my slider to actually be um, coming out a little bit and for maximum we're gonna put five point or so this is gonna be a 4.25 I'm just kind of eyeballing it to see if this is what I'm supposed to do and no I put my dimensions in backwards so let's do that back so uh, negative 4.25 and 0 0.5 if I hit play now there we go it's sliding kind of a little bit as expected now not perfect so let's edit that a little bit. Let's do one inch. Much better. It looks like we're going the full distance. It goes a little bit too far. I'm not too concerned because when we throw my other constraints, it will act as accordingly. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is throw in all of our pins. So these pins right here, the middle of this pin is actually gonna go through the top of that hole. That way half is sticking out, half is sticking in, 
it's fastened, we're looking good. Same thing right here. We're gonna have this pin right here. Middle of this pin is gonna go through the top of that plane. Okay, and we are almost done, folks. We're looking good. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go fast and crazy with our pins. So I'm gonna click on the front of each pin and the top of each hole it belongs to. So, click on the front of a bolt. Looking all right. Okay. This, uh, oh, I went too far. Made a boo boo there, we're gonna click exit and we're gonna try this again. Top of that plane. There we go. Hit fasten. Top of this pin. This pin is going to go over here. Hit the check mark. Top of this pin. It's going to go right here. Hit the check mark. Top of this pin. It's going to go right here. Check mark. Top of this. And we are almost done. Let's see if I did everything correct. Okay, is everything nice and matched up on the other side? We sure are. Okay, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We've got our sliders. We've got our put the, our arms put. Or sorry, we've got our sliders put together. We have our corner blocks. Now all we need to do is throw in the arm, and we are done. Okay. So this last one is going to be the tricky part is because it's going to be a revolute constraint, a revolute mate. The first one's going to be pretty easy. And so I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to find the top plane of my circle here. And it's going to be revolving around the top plane of that circle. Now notice I had to do it that way. If I tried to do it backwards, um, it's going to have the the, the trammel rotating around the pin. Um, so we click on the arm first, then we click on the pin. Hit play. Does it work as expected? Absolutely. We hit the check mark and now we're good. So the next thing we're going to do is our last revolute. So we're going to click count down four holes. So one, two, three, four. This is where our second one is going to be. So we click on the top of that plane. We click on the top of this plane hit play, and you're like, uh-oh, it just undid my other constraint. And it didn't, this is just a preview. This is a preview of just this constraint or this, this mate right here. And so when I hit this green check mark, it's now going to compute, okay, with that revolute, how does it affect everything else? And where is our default position gonna be at now? And so that means we are officially done. Oh, I did forget. We are going to throw in one more block for our end handle. There we go. Throw that in there. Hit check mark. We got to have a small handle on there. So I'm going to go in here. Put a very, very, very small handle on our trammel. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, if we did things correctly, it should work. However, if we try to move this around, uh, it tends to jump around a little bit. So how do you showcase what your uh, object does a little more smoothly? If we right click down here on Revolute and hit Animate, we're gonna do a loop and then hit Play and then watch our trammel in action. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a public document on Onshape, and so you and your students can have all these parts. The assembly won't be there. That way they can make their own copy and create the assembly on their own. How do we do that? Um, I'm going to show you, do a follow-up video on how to create a copy of Trammel. That way you can do it on your own, uh, but this video has run quite long. Okay, guys, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know. It was wonderful to build a working trammel. I'm curious to see what we're gonna build next. 
Until then, I'll see you. Uh, feel free if you have any questions, comments, concern, throw them down in the like or sorry, throw them down in the comment section. Like and subscribe as always. And until then, I'll see you on the next video.